Welcome back. You are watching Notepad. We are talking about mental health and its situation right now in Malaysia, particularly when we are undergoing the third phase of the MCO or the Movement Control Order. Joining me is Dr. Nofaiza. She is a psychiatrist at the Faculty of Medicine UITM. Dr. Nofaiza, let's continue our conversation on the situation in Malaysia right now when it comes to keeping ourselves healthy through mental means. And of course, uh, one of the element right now is indeed offering psychosocial support. Plenty of NGOs and organizations in and around the country are actually rendering this kind of service. What's your view on psychosocial support? Okay. Um, about the psychosocial support, um, I think a lot, um, again, our government and a lot of MG NGOs are uh, providing, um, you know, as many platforms as possible. For example, we have the psychological, uh, psychosocial support um, the, through, the, uh, through the telephone um, run by the, um, the, uh, our health ministry uh, in collaboration with the Mercy Malaysia in which uh, they have a, a number that um, you know the, uh, Malaysians can call to ask for support psychologically or if there's any um, concern that they have. Um, other NGOs as well like Refenders are very much involved and as I mentioned um, specifically in UITM we have um, our hotlines in which um, you know our staff and our students can actually call us and discuss about their mental health well-being, about their struggle, and we try to facilitate them the best that we can, um, so that they can, uh, so that um, things will, uh, they, they will feel validated, will feel supported, and you know, uh, take charge of their mental health. Mm. Okay, let's uh, talk a little bit about the signs of a patient when or, uh, he or she needs psychosocial support. What kind of things can we actually look out for when it comes to this? Okay, um, I think um, it, that's why it is um, important for all of us to be informed on how, um, you know, about how we can support each other appropriately. Um, as I mentioned just now, the government and the NGOs are providing some support. However, I think most importantly, we, um, you know, among the family members as well, we need to, it is um, among the family members, we can support each other. Um, how we can do, we have to be aware um, of the people around, uh, around us. Sometimes it is very difficult um, if, you know, with the limitation of face-to-face -face interaction, but we can start with our family members. We can ask, uh, we can use the, the formula of 5R um, for us to support each other. The 5R is one, uh, we should always be ready to talk, to listen to the people around us. For example, our family members, our children, um, you know, our parents who are living with us. Um, you know, ask them about uh, what are their concern, ask them about, about what their worries and also to discuss um, with, with uh, to discuss appropriately about the uncertainties about um, about COVID-19 especially and what we have to do during this period of MCO. So that's ready to talk. And the second R is reassure uh, the people around us, our family, that um, you know whatever um, that you know uh, we, we if if you are comply uh, to the MCO you are actually in a in a in a reasonably safe environment and that these things if we work together we can get through this um, successfully inshallah and the third art is also to regulate um, the, the information that we have, you know, since the, the start of this COVID-19, there's a lot uh, of information, overflow of information. Therefore, it is important for us to have the, the, uh, the information diet, not just the food diet, the information diet, in which we, uh, we, we regulate what are the, uh, we, we regulate what are the um, sources that are reliable, that we can get information about things that are going on around us so that 
we will not get affected negatively by all the other um, you know uh, posting or um, information that can just trigger heightened emotions such as anxiety sadness and uh, you know um, excessive worries uh, thirdly you know, um, fourthly we should um, have a certain kind of routine it is advised uh, it is advisable for us to continue to have um, our own routine uh, while we are in the MCO comp uh, the same as uh, to the time when we are not under the MCO in which for example uh, we we have to, to determine the time of uh, the time where we should we wake up in the morning what to do after that uh, we don't continue with our um, daily work um, have time to rest have specific time to do your exercise because as you know um, the mental health is closely related to our physical physical health and vice versa so if you can take charge of that we will be more in control of our mental health and lastly um, all of us should be the role model um, to our surrounding to the people around us the best that we can um, it is okay not to be okay all of us like I said it's expected to be you know anxiety to to, to be there um, you know low mood to be there but if we have enough information um, and we can uh, you know deal with the current situation calmly with the good information we can be the role model to our to the people around us to deal with this situation uh, effectively and healthily as well yeah Right, I want to draw your attention to what we call the new normal, but we'll talk about that right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. This is Notepad. We are talking about mental health. Very recently, the Director General of Health, Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah, uh, have said that there has to be new ways of doing things for Malaysians in terms of what he coins the new normal. Things like assemblies, large meetings and gatherings, symposiums, expos, even greeting somebody. We have to really rethink on how we do things moving forward, at least for the near term or the mid term. This is where we want to draw in the conversation with Dr. Faiza of UITM. Um, Dr. Faiza, what do you think is the situation right now when it comes to acclimatizing ourselves or reimagining ourselves working under the new normal situation? Do you think that we have what it takes when it comes to bringing ourselves to do things differently um, after or post COVID-19 uh, aftermath? What's the story there? That's a very um, good question. You see, as we are, we are not just social beings, but we are very adaptable as well. You know, um, you know, having um, whatever we are facing at the moment with the COVID-19, with the MCOs, um, we can view that um, as a form of loss. Um, you know, in a way, we are all grieving because we, we actually lose our, um, our, our, you know, the, 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 the way we used to do normally as before. So during this uh, this loss period or you know the grieving period, the normal reaction would be as as we have experienced before, you know shock, um, and then we, um, we we will be in denial, and then to a certain extent we are angry, and then we we, we can buy you know we, we do it bargaining, and then for some we get depressed, and eventually, if we go through this process. Um, healthily, we will come to the stage of acceptance, the new normal. Okay. Uh, however, the process it's not um, it's not um, it's not easy. Uh, we need to have a lot of support from one another. This is the time in uh, we you know is that is the best if we can be mindful and also be creative. So be mindful, meaning you know to be to be able to to deal with the current situation. Um, 
do you take in consideration, uh, taking um, you know the current situation as a present situation, and not to think so much about the future and worry unnecessarily. So what we need to do now is we have to, um, in order for us to adapt, we have to focus on things that uh, are within our control. For example, what's within our control now is how we we spend time at home. What are the activities you know aside from. Um, you know, last time maybe we can go and meet up in in in, in a restaurant or in mama to talk and to discuss things. Now we can you know utilize the, the video conferencing, the, the telephone calls to actually continue with whatever we are we want to do. Um, we can we have the the, the control to actually. Um, uh, we need to be, be creative on how we're going to spend our time with our family um, and with our friends and even with our colleague, um, you know, by, by utilizing this other platform. And at the same time, uh, in order to, for us to get through this new normal, we should um, constantly um, have to connect with our body using you know using um, what we call the relaxation technique like breathing and also focus on being present of what we are seeing what we are feeling what we are you know smelling or touching so that all can help with our process of adapting to the new normal like um, you have mentioned and i think most important one of the other thing we have to that we can focus on as well is about you know reconnect with our own spirituality um, you know, connect to the to, to how we see things, and um, you know, connect with um, the higher power, and be more accepting of the changes that we have to go through now. I think it is during this difficult time we should all um, stay united um, together and work with each other, work with the government um, to to stay safe, and also at the same time. We have to help each other to 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 improve our psychological health because it is important. Psychological health is also very important um, for us to win this right. battle, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Doctor, for this very invigorating conversation. But we have to draw this uh, conversation to a close, at least for today. If you've missed any part of this interview. Just head on to astroawani.com, look for Notepad over there. There are plenty of interviews such as this. You can also get me on podcasts as well as on our mobile devices. Just watch or download um, the Astro Awani, um app wherever you get the application. Until next time, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.